All right, what is going on guys? So, you wanna learn how to deadlift. All right, I'm gonna hop right into it. The deadlift is the manliest lift out there. No competition. Come on! My God, God, it's God, it's God. God. To be alive if you can't do deadlift. You can fight me about it, but I'm gonna stick to it. Number one, uh, because it's my strongest lift. Number two, because there is nothing cooler than ripping just a disgusting amount of weight off the ground. So let's get into how to build your biggest deadlift. All right, first thing we got to look at is how you're going to grip the bar. Now, a lot of people, they don't understand the differences in grips and when to use one versus the other. So if you're a power lifter, you can't use any accessories like straps and wraps and stuff like that. You have to grip it with just your hands. Now, if you're just an avid gym goer like I am, well, then you can use straps to help you lift a weight that's more than you could actually grip in your hands. I recommend using a little bit of both. So let's run through the three basic grip. Your first one's gonna be the double overhand grip. This is consistently the weakest grip that people have simply because you have to squeeze the bar with everything you've got. And as that pulls, obviously your forearms are not gonna be as strong as the rest of your posterior chain combined. So they're gonna give out first. So what do we do to counteract this? Well, we've got option two, which is the overhand underhand grip or switch grip. So what this does, it allows you to lift as much weight as possible because as it rolls out of one hand, it'll roll more into the other hand and vice versa, thereby allowing you to kind of cradle it between those two hands and never lose grip of it. Now, again, the pure amount of weight, if your grip strength is not you know, super powerful, it could have that bar slip through, but it's gonna give you much more grip than the double overhand. Now, grip number three, that is kind of like, this one takes practice. It's not easy, I'm not an expert at it, but I like to do my warm up sets, working up to my max weight using this grip to practice it, and it's called hook grip. Very, very popular with Olympic lifters, and some of the biggest deadlifters nowadays are using hook grip, especially in powerlifting meets, because it essentially creates a strap using your thumb, your pointer finger, and your middle finger. So what this does, you wrap your two, your pointer finger and your middle finger around the bar over top of your thumb, and then your other fingers wrap around the bar normally. And when you pull, if done correctly, the pressure of the bar will push your thumb into your two other fingers, locking the bar in place. Now again, it's very uncomfortable when you first start doing it. It requires a certain amount of mobility in your thumbs, and it takes a lot of practice. So don't expect it to feel like a strap right off the bat. You have to take time to practice it. Okay, so now that you know the grips, let's get into when you wanna use strap. If you're a power lifter, you're working towards a meet, probably as few times as possible. But if you're a bodybuilder or you're just looking to bring up your deadlift as high as possible, using strap is going to allow you to overload your back and your hamstrings and glutes and everything that's involved in a deadlift without having your grip being a limiting factor. I like to switch between using grip or assistance, using straps and not using straps when I do my program. So maybe for one month I'll use straps, for the next month I won't, but it's gonna vary with how much I can lift. So I can't go in expecting to pull my 500 pounds for reps without straps like I could with straps, simply because I just don't have that grip strength and that's a limiting factor for me. Straps do help you though when you're trying to overload your back and your legs. So. If you're bodybuilding, again, use straps, but use them periodically. Now that we've got grip out of the way, we're gonna look into five variations to help you absolutely blow up your deadlift. All right, so the first variable, the first different deadlift you can use to mix things up and start you know, getting some more growth in there, it's gonna be your reverse position deadlift or your switch position deadlift. Now, I'll explain what this means. If you're a person who conventionally, or I shouldn't say that because that's <laughs> gonna confuse you in a second, you'll see why. If you're a person who usually lifts sumo, meaning your hands are inside your knees and your legs are spread real wide apart, then your switch position is going to be conventional, which is your hands and your arms go on the outside of your knees and you lift from that more narrow position. So sumo, conventional. 
You wanna get good at both because both have different leverages and they work the back and the legs in different ways. So if you've been doing sumo your entire life, throw in a month of conventional training and it's gonna have carryover to your sumo total. Number two, we're looking at deficit deadlifts. What does this mean? We're gonna be pulling from a longer range of motion by lifting ourselves a little higher off the floor. This can be done a, a number of ways, but I found the easiest way is just to use a, like a, a standard plate or two as a platform. Um, they're usually very sturdy and it gives you about three to four inches more to pull the bar and it's gonna overload your back and uh, basically get that solid. So if your back tends to be the part that rounds first or gives out, putting in much lighter deficit deadlifts is gonna help bring up the strength in your lower back and your hamstrings off the floor. Um, this was something that I struggled with when I was first starting. I would immediately cat back, which is, you know, round your back really bad, which is terrible because it gives you momentum initially, but then you have to remove your spine at the top of the movement. And the number one rule of deadlifting is once you start moving, you do not want your spine to change position. So if you start rounded, you've got to finish rounded, but that's not a real rep. So you want to start with a flat back, end with a flat back, the best way to make that happen is going to be by getting a stronger lower back, your spinal erectors, and the deficit deadlift is there for that. All right, coming in at number three, we've got pause deadlifts. Same kind of idea here, guys. If you're someone who struggles, once you've gotten it off the floor, but you tend to hit a sticking point about halfway up where you just can't get through there and you kind of shake and then it goes back down, pause deadlifts are for you. Pause deadlifts help you not only maintain proper form through that midpoint of the movement, which is gonna make, it's gonna give you the best chance at getting through that sticking point because it's ingraining in your mind that you need to stay optimally positioned. Basically, you're in the best mechanical position to keep generating that upward force. Doing pause deadlifts, you're gonna basically get halfway up and have that isometric or standstill contraction there for a second, two seconds, even three seconds, and then finish the movement. Now, you're gonna be using a lighter weight because obviously, can't just handle this with our maximal loads. What that's gonna do is it's gonna build up a lot of strength in your lower back, your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, in that middle position, allowing you to burst through it. And mentally, it's gonna get you more confident feeling that sticking point. Because guess what? The sticking point's never gonna go away altogether. You're just gonna get better at mentally being prepared to keep pulling through that sticking point. So, pause deadlifts, my number three variation to help blow up your deadlift. What else did we have? Okay, coming in at number four now, the opposite of our deficit deadlifts, we're gonna be working on the lockout, and this is gonna be what we would call block pulls, or if you go from very high, rack pulls. What I'm showing you on the screen right now is block pulls. A rack pull would simply be going into a squat rack and setting it up off of the kind of the uh, bars to go across the rack. You'd lower them so that the bar rests just below your knees, and then you'd pull from there. The block pull, it's gonna be a little bit lower, so it's just resting higher on the shin than the bar normally would. And I do this by, by putting two bumper plates on either side, I put my weight on top of that, and then from there, I do my pull. This will give you, you know, if you're someone who, um, you're quick off the floor, but your lockout is tough for you, this is a great variation to help build that power and strengthen that top part of the movement. And with these, you can tend to load up the weight a little bit heavier because you're giving yourself the mechanical advantage of being higher off the floor already. So if you're someone who you get it to the very, very top and then at the very, very top, you just can't quite pull through, try these, program these in for four weeks. I guarantee you, they're gonna give you a ton of carryover. It's time for my last one. And this one, it might be you know a bit of a curveball for some of you guys. And it's something that I didn't train for a long, long time. And that is trap bar deadlifts. Trap bar deadlifts, um, it basically it places the weight directly to the side of you instead of in front of you. Now, what does this do? Well, it takes your back out of the movement a lot and really forces you to almost squat the weight up. Now, I know a lot of you are going to look at me and go, well, how the heck does that help my deadlift? For those of you who are extremely dominant with your back, you tend to let your legs shoot up quickly and then your back is what really pulls the weight through the entire movement. That may work for a while, but if you really truly wanna have good form on the deadlift and pull those insane, insane numbers, I'm talking 500 pounds up to like 900 pounds, you can't have a weak foundation in your legs. 
If you're someone who's always relying on their back to pull throughout the entire movement, you're simply going to hit a cap where that bad form is either going to one, lead to an injury, or two, not going to have enough power to grind through that much weight. To pull those maximal, maximal loads, you need a synergistic response from the entire body. What does that mean? Basically, you need your legs and your back to be working together optimally. So if your legs are weak, you're going to immediately have them kind of shoot up and get out of the way to allow your back to pull through. The trap bar deadlift, that's exactly what this addresses. The trap bar deadlift says, hey, guess what, back? We're taking you out of the equation because now you're basically completely upright from the start of the movement and the end of the movement. All of the force has to be generated from the quads, the glutes, and the hamstrings. And you're basically isometrically holding that contraction with your back, just staying locked in place. So it takes the flexion out of the erectors and just keep, well, it doesn't take them out, but it takes the movement out of the erectors and they just stay flexed and upright the entire time, allowing you to grow your quads, grow your glutes, grow your hamstrings, and ultimately build that bigger foundation so that the next time you go to deadlift conventionally or sumo, you're pulling much more with your entire body than just your back. All right, guys, that's all I've got for today. I hope this helped you. If it did, please feel free to leave a like down below. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna be pumping out plenty more content that you guys wanna see. Feel free to leave a comment down below telling me what specifically you're struggling with and what you'd like to see a video on or comment or DM me on Instagram. I'm very active on there as well. I'll put my link up on the screen here for my Instagram. You can always find me there and I'll be happy to help you achieve your goals as well. I'm doing online coaching. So DM me on Instagram, shoot me an email in the link below if you're interested in signing up for that. Again, the quickest way to achieve your goals is to have a coach who's going to keep you accountable and give you the scientifically proven methods of diet and strength training to get you where you need to go. So if that's something that you think you need, hit me up. I'd be happy to help you. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I'm thankful for each and every one of you here. It's a season of giving, so feel free to give some of this advice to your friends or share the video with them. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace.